So with that, uh, let me start off with our first uh, agenda item, which is the conceptual questions, um, um, uh, doing it with the perplexity. <laughs> um, I haven't looked at these questions in a while. I'm not entirely sure um, how well perplexity would do. Well, we'll see. Um, so yeah, so let me ask these three questions of uh, perplexity, or oh, what that is so Jung doing. Um, yeah, uh, let me ask you these three questions of perplexity, and uh, we'll see how well it goes. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, last question is, I think this is the question that I, um, the um, uh, chat GPT didn't answer well, and I really wanted, um, yeah, yeah, because chat GPT would uh, try to answer this uh, with the idea of uh, lepton flavor conservation, which is valid, but at this point in the semester, we wanted to use conservation of um, energy and momentum. So, so we'll see how well perplexity does there when we get to that question. So let me start out with our very first question. Probably gonna have to fix up some of the paste job. You know, represents what is known as yeah, paradigm shift, uh, the description of an icon. Uh, among the philosopher science, uh, all the potential, everything, solution, not a baby, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, A and B. All right. Ask, and then uh, let me think about the question while it's answering. How does it, so general principles, they remain the same. So, like, energy conservation is held, momentum conservation is held, and so on. But it'll uh, affect the specific formulas. Like when you are dealing conservation of energy and momentum, you do have to use relativistic energy and momentum, and so on. So let's see. Uh, special relativity, formula, profound implications, principle of relativity is, is intact, right? Um, conservation of energy and momentum, our fundamental principles, modif uh, um, I mean, I guess, um, but it's, uh, I don't know. Um, I guess it's not wrong. I just don't like this particular way of saying it. Because the way I, um, so, you know, instead of saying E is equal to MC squared, which is the rest energy, um, you just talk about the relativistic energy, which is gamma MC squared. And relativistic energy includes rest energy, and it includes kinetic energy. So, uh, I don't like this particular formulation, but I guess it's technically not wrong. And there may be other physicists who like that formulation. <laughs> Like mass being converted into energy and vice versa. So I do think uh, reading through Griffith's uh, revolutions in 20th century physics textbook, I do think he um, likes this. I don't. Like, uh, you know, um, it's like, I don't, from my perspective, uh, mass has energy, rest energy, and it's not like converted into energy, but it's fine. You will find uh, textbook authors who holds these views. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is definitely correct. Yeah, uh, we used to have mass as one thing, energy as another thing. Now they are combined into one thing that is expressed in the relativistic energy. Yeah. Conservation loss the hold, modified form. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, the way I like to say this: conservation loss hold. Uh, but what we have to make sure is that we use relativistic versions of the formulas. Because from my perspective, the conservation law is the principle, um, separate from the specific mathematical expressions you might write down. Uh, calculation of relative velocity, what? Um, is that one of the things? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so there you have to use relativistic velocity transformation, which is this complicated formula that I don't have memorized. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you do have to do that. Um, Principle of inertia um, is uh, still correct, I think, still valid. Now this uh, um, has gone um, different. It has gone different um, iterations of what's uh, popular. So um, let me bring up the that textbook, uh, Revolutions in Twentieth Century Physics, to show you what I mean. Uh, kind of the in one 
short textbook uh, how it that encapsulate because the idea that mass changes with velocity that used to be popular at some point you will see the idea of relativistic mass when it comes to uh, like you'll uh, see reference to that in Feynman lectures but uh, these days that idea has gone out of favor and you will see that reference in our textbook and I just want to bring in one more reference so this is the textbook that I'm referring to, written by David Griffiths, uh, who's a popular upper division textbook author. And now uh, here, mass and momentum. And I think uh, he does talk about yeah the relativistic mass. And he does say this formula. And you will see some um, textbook authors, especially older people, <laughs> who refer to basically this idea of relativistic mass. And um, this particular idea has fallen out of favor really for two reasons. Uh, one is that this is not really a distinct concept because uh, for those working with relativistic dynamics, there's a concept called relativistic energy. That's a gamma mc squared. So relativistic mass is basically relati relativistic energy without c. And if you are used to working with a unit where c is equal to one, relativistic mass is relativistic energy. So it doesn't add anything new to the concept that you already have of relativistic energy. And the other is uh, this, uh, um, the amount of the, the inertia that it has, it can't really be separated from relativistic momentum. So, um, and you know, in relativistic momentum, you have gamma M there. So, um, so, 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 you know, it's a, that idea of the relativistic mass. Um, other, so if you already have relativistic momentum and relativistic energy, the additional idea of relativistic mass is, um, it's a superfluous. So, and I think even David Griffith, who is a older uh, textbook author, uh, admits at some point that the idea of relativistic mass is, um, not as popular these days. Yeah, relativistic energy, just that, yeah, yeah. This is the idea of relativistic energy. And there's the rest energy. And yeah, nowadays, most physicists prefer relativistic energy and the whole notion of relativistic mass has largely died out. So, you know, if you want to appear to be an older physicist, then refer to relativistic mass. Uh, if you want to be the younger up and coming person, then refer to relativistic energy. So, so yeah, this uh, um, is, uh, you know, ChatGPT hasn't kept up with the times. So, uh, conservation of energy and momentum applications. Yeah, what must we use? Yeah, that's right. Uh, acceleration of the body. Yeah, so relative stick version looks like this. And that version is correct. Now this gets super complicated because the before the time dependence used to be just in velocity term. Now it's also in gamma through the velocity term that's in gamma. So um, you don't really want to do deal with the traditional idea of force in relativity. It gets complicated. Um, yeah, I stay away at least in this lower division uh, special relativity class. So the, the response seems fine, uh, other than the reference to the outdated of notions of relativistic mass, fine to me. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, really the people that we respect, like Richard Feynman and David Griffiths, because they are older people, they do from time to time refer to relativistic mass. <laughs> Okay, velocity increase. Uh, so both the momentum and energy do not have an upper limit. Uh, the gamma factor, which is in there for the relativistic version, can increase without limit. So so that uh, kind of goes to um, people who are dealing with the ultra relativistic um, circumstances. You will see them basically working with the gamma gamma factor as an indicator of uh, how fast something is moving in terms of its momentum and energy, and speed is basically c. So concept of upper limit, nuance topic, uh, speed of light is the ultimate speed limit, sure. Uh, velocity increase, uh, yeah, again, I would not refer to relativistic mass because it's, uh, it, it, it 
doesn't add anything new. Just to deal with the energy and momentum, and you don't need the idea of relativistic mass. Now you do need the idea of inertia. Uh, the um, uh, what's called not inertial mass. I guess that can be confusing. You need the idea of what's called invariant mass, um, which is the uh, sometimes called rest mass, uh, which. Um, for those of us who have decided to not refer to relativistic mass, whenever we say mass, we do mean uh, the we we do mean the rest mass and invariant mass. So uh, so you know just forget about relative relativistic mass. So as the velocity increases, uh, the gamma factor increases, uh, which means if you are using relativistic. Uh, momentum and energy formula, you know, gamma m v, gamma m c squared, those can increase without limit. Um, so yeah, the, if you're using gamma m v, v can approach c, okay, that's the upper limit, but gamma can increase without limit. That's the main thing. And same thing with energy, relativistic energy is gamma m c squared. And so here, actually, the only variable is gamma. So as the velocity changes, the only way relativistic energy changes is through the change of gamma factor. And again, that increases without limit. So the highest uh, gamma factor we can get to uh, with the particle accelerators is around, I think, uh, 7,000, 7 TeV uh, in proton accelerators. That's the LHC. Um, um, I think there are proposals to build uh, bigger accelerators to be able to reach higher gamma factor. Uh, yeah, so all this sounds good. Kind of a long for what could be a simpler answer, but Bye. All right. Let's look at the last question. That's the the one I'm interested in. I uh, I'm interested in will perplexity using GPT four get this right in a way that GPT three point five chat GPT couldn't get uh, pi um, plus minus particle mass one forty nine mv over c squared. Not to keep to me. Mu plus minus oh, mass uh, 106 MeV per C squared and a neutrino nu mu. You can treat this massless here, decay of pi on pi um, plus minus to mu plus minus plus nu mu. Probably only the mu that they're returning. Properly to between scan bird from is actually possible. Why is it not possible? That is without why is this decay pi plus minus to mu plus minus? And I wanted to explain in terms of conservation of energy and momentum. That's really what this is. Um, don't talk about <laughs> flavors <laughs> because we that's a particle physics, and actually, this semester we won't get to cover it at all, or uh, it is in the course shelf. But it's in that uh, area marked optional. So if you, you are interested, you can cover it. But um, people who are interested in the required parts of the class, you can skip it without any consequences. So DK me into impossible to do fundamental conservation. Yeah, conservation of energy and momentum would be the biggest thing. And to analyze it most succinctly, you analyze it in the rest frame of the pion. In which case, the conservation of momentum implies muon should be produced at rest. And because of the differences in the ener rest energy, then that would imply violation of conservation of energy. So uh, let's see, the total energy must be equal. I think at, yeah, at rest into muon without neutrino means it would have, uh, does it explain? Um, yeah, it's not um, it's spelling out. So the part that would be nice to say is that in this decay, muon would be produced at rest, meaning um, the difference of uh, the rest energy is a violation of conservation of energy. That's fine. Angular momentum conservation, yeah. Uh, if you knew the pion is a scalar particle, as in spin zero particle, and muon is a spin half particle, <laughs> uh, that's fine. We can skip it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. Now, 
Um, so these are now quant things that uh, we haven't covered definitely, but but this is fine. The rest are I guess extraneous. Um, yeah, this uh, we actually won't get to cover it at all. <laughs> uh, although I do have a really old slide that covers the CPT symmetry. Um, experience. Yeah. All right, that looks good, and I think it has done better than ChatGPT 3.5, which wasn't able to bring up this. I think I have to review the old video to see with it. So okay, that's all the questions, uh, all the conceptual questions, asking um, perplexity, and uh, yeah, it's done well, um, and uh, and uh, I guess it didn't do so well with the special relativity paradoxes, but maybe that's just a one-time thing. <laughs>